preparing to live stream the meeting. We are live. Woo! Hey, Mike, you know what? What? One. We're a minute late. I know it. Goodness. That's probably because that Papa hasn't showed up yet, but he'll probably join us a little later on. <laughs> He's probably out celebrating. So, hey, welcome, greetings, salutations. What other words are for hello, greetings, something like that? Anyway, <laughs> it's Wednesday night. That means it is time for Mudget's Nuggets with the world famous Michael Mudget. He's up there, the way I see the screen. Papa is not either direction. He'll hopefully join us later on. Maybe Mike's sister will join us. Mike and Jeannie might hit us too, but it is Wednesday, June 2nd. We just started the new month. So uh, thank you for joining us tonight. If you're watching us live, we appreciate it. If you're watching us on tape, hey, love to have you join us live anytime, but we're glad you made it. Whether you're watching us on Facebook Live on the video part, if you're on Mike's website, which is lighthouseguidance.net, or if you're on Michael Mudgett's YouTube channel, all these videos are posted there. And this is actually episode 26. Last week we celebrated 25 episodes. Now we're on 26. Ah, congratulations. Yes. Thank so you, Dana. We do this every Wednesday night. We hope this is your appointment TV. It is for us. We love doing this. This is actually kind of cool. We first started out talking about Michael's book. He re edited it, came out 2013. Am I correct on the year? Or was it yeah. 2011? Yeah. 2013. Yeah. Then he re edited it, came back out with it last year, made some really cool edits in it, made it look really nice. It's back out. You can download a free sample if you go to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Google Playbooks, Apple Books, Smashwords, uh, Zook. I can't, I can't think of the name of it right there. Anyway, um, there's all kinds of them. Maybe the library has it. If you want a hard, oh, by the way, that price is only $5.99. If you want to buy the book, many of those locations, you get a free chapter if you download it. Take a look. It's good stuff. It is very good stuff. I read it way back when. I reread it again. It's good. You will learn a lot. You'll have a lot of fun because, in case you didn't know it, Mike and I were in the same grade. We graduated from school together. Papa Mike, same thing, but he and his family, they uh, they bailed out after 10th grade. They moved away up by, what, Mike, was it Traverse City? Is that what Papa Yeah, it's the Lake Ann, I think. So, but he still keeps in touch with us. We're trying to get him to come back to one of our high school reunions one of these days. But, hey, life is good. We're, we're having fun. Uh, we started talking about his book. After the book, we've now morphed into other things because, yes, this is religion flavored, but you know what? Religion is like ice cream. Why? Well, what flavor are you? Are you vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, sprinkles, butterscotch, buttercream, mint chocolate chip, Batman, whatever. It's all ice cream when you get down to it, but they're all different flavors. It's like same hey. thing with churches. They've got all these different churches. They focus on different things, but the common denominator they all worship Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. So what we're working on, we're trying to, it's not how much God you have in you, it's how much God you get out of you. We try to share the Holy Spirit with everyone yes. because, hey, he's got some good answers, very good answers, and it's good to believe in some. You can't see them, but you know what? God works in mysterious ways. Sometimes you may get a message. Do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. Try this. Have you talked to this person? Go see him. Whatever. Intuition. Pay attention. Somebody's talking to you. He's got a plan. And you know what? His plan is different for everyone. Mike and I, we both wear glasses. I got my contacts in now. But if I wear glasses, so does Mike. If Mike put on my glasses, he wouldn't see too good because that prescription is for me, not Mike. And if Mike gave his glasses to me to wear, I probably would have a hard time seeing out of them because those are his prescription. They're designed for him. 
and his eyes. That's what religion's all about. We're all different. We're all going to find our own path, our own way back to God. Yeah. Question is, where is that path? What direction do I go? What decisions do I make? It's actually pretty simple. Pay attention to the Bible. <clears throat> Listen to what God says. And you know what? Sometimes it's not it's not like, all right, here's a map. I'm going to go from A to B, then B to C, C to D, E to, and there it is. We get to heaven. It doesn't always work out that way. There are a lot of, you know, somebody said it, and I forget who it was. Life happens after you make plans. And man, you think you're from point A to point B? No, nah, you're all over the place sometimes before you get there. But if you keep moving, you'll get there. Sometimes... And if life was easy, everyone would be doing it. Life isn't always easy. I think all of us can attest to that one. So anyway, tonight we have approximately 60 minutes, give or take, depends on what we talk about, what we get into. We never know. This isn't scripted other than you know, opening and closing. And uh, we like your feedback. Send us an email if you want to. Dana at lighthouseguidance.net. Mike, that's big Mike up there at lighthouseguidance.net or pop up at lighthouseguidance.net because we'd like to hear from you or send us a message. Mike, I saw your mom wrote us something this week on your uh, on your page. That was kind of cool. She's awesome. She's listening to us all the time. Hey, mom. Your mom's a good lady. I like her. She is really cool. <clears throat> so, your mom's been through a lot, but I hopefully she's got a lot more coming. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What else we got here? We do this every Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night. We try. I make sure I don't miss it. I like this. I have fun. This is a hoot. Connecting with you, telling stories, learning about each other and families and life events. Yep. It's fascinating. It really is. Yep. So, and for everyone else out there, if you got someone in your life, pay attention to them. They're not going to be here forever. Plain simple. I went uh, this past Monday was Memorial Day. I remember a year ago, we took a picture of my mom's tombstone with my dad over it. Well, this year, my dad wasn't here. He died in October. So I went and saw both of them with my younger brother. We had a good time. So, And with Mike, you've lost two brothers and a father. Wow. Your mom has got to be a saint. I'll tell you. Yeah. Loss. Especially you, dad and two brothers. So, um, One of your brothers is Duncan. And they do a golf tournament. Has that happened yet for this no, year? No, no. They um they stopped that a couple of years ago. He ran oh. it. I don't know how many years. Must have been eight years, uh, five years, or six years. Um, and then it it was still going strong, but um, it just it just didn't seem right to continue to do it. But it was fun. We had a blast. Oh, I remember. I think it was Pat Hayhoe was the one who organized. Yeah, Jeff Jones and Pat Hayhoe. <clears throat> they did a really good job. They, they're good. They're good peoples. You know, Mason's full of good people. The whole world is full of good people. Mm -hmm. The bad news is, you watch the news, all you hear is the bad stuff. Right. You never hear the good stuff. You gotta <clears throat> search for that. There's, there's one thing that um, happens in this world, you, you know, <clears throat> and it is stuff happens. I remember that when I worked for Catholic Charities and this, I was frustrated with the paperwork. And this lady always said to me, you know, she could tell I was frustrated. She goes, hey, Mike, she was like the mother of our group, you know, uh -huh. she was like the secretary and she was, she was probably 65. She said, hey, Mike, I go, what, what's constant in this life? And I go change and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, the thing is, is that we've got to understand that in this world, we're going to have trouble. This world has a system and, and Christians try to correct it by changing the world. What we need to do is follow our path with God. So many people say, well, let's change the world. Let's have a big revival. You know what I say a revival is? Win one. If you win one, and then the next year you win one and they win one, the world doubles in 25 years. The whole world would be saved if you just win one. 
You see, we don't need a big thing. We just need to do what God called us to do. You have good news, you have bad news. In life, you're going to have both of those. But be of good comfort. God has overcome the world. Isn't that good news? That is great news. In the midst of trouble, there is peace for the Christian, for the one who believes in God. And, and they say, God, the world's come, you know, it's going to hell, you know, and everything else. It always has been. But if you stay with God, there's peace in the midst of the storm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want. That's what Dane was talking about. I'm talking about is when the Holy Spirit comes in, even the midst of fear. He's got every he's got our back. But we got to trust him. That's hard to do sometimes when we don't see him. He's invisible, but he's everywhere. You know, we talked at one time where Santa Claus, he uh, sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Yeah. <laughs> How about Jesus? <laughs> He's in your That's brain. Right. Yeah, he, he, is, he is constantly with us. And this is another thing. We think we got to somehow go through a fast. We have to read the Bible. We have to, we have to really clean up our life to talk to our father. Now think about what I just said. If he's our father, did you have to do that with your dad before you could talk to him? Kind of, but by the same token, our dad loved us no matter what we did. Right, right. It's like we don't have to get better in order to talk to dad. But what happens is, when we go to God, we got to say, oh, if you really want to listen to God, you're going to have to be holy. Oh, my God, you've got to really sell out. You got to fast. You got to you got to pray. You got to clean up your life because God won't speak to you. I'm telling you, God will speak to you in the midst of your darkest days. He said, um, when you think about talking to God. He comes up and he goes, if you go to your earthly father and you ask for a loaf of bread, <clears throat> will he give you a stone? That's what the Bible says. Will he give him a stone? No. He'll give you bread. So will your heavenly father. Is all we got to do is make time for him. And we'll find that the early church made time for him. They made, they made, they made time for God to listen to him, not just speak to him. So I think it's interesting. You remember Mike talked about uh, the church, the, was it the Amish churches in Pennsylvania that he went to? Mm -hmm. He goes there, whoa, it's quiet. Nobody's talking. What's going on? He says, they're quiet until God talks to them and they have something to say. Then they'll say it. Do you know what, you know what they were called? Tell me. Quakers. That's right. William Penn was a Quaker. Mm -hmm. And how they understood quaking is when the Holy Spirit, when they were quiet, they began to they began to quake in themselves, shake. The Holy Spirit came on them, and they called them the Quakers. The wow, Quakers, isn't that amazing? That and, that, and the I, Quakers, I the Quakers, and also like Pennzoil, Quaker State, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's from Pennzoil. That's from Pennsylvania, and that's why they call them the Quakers. Wow. Yeah. It's an amazing thing. And, and, you know, God rolls with different types of people. And it isn't that they're weird or that they're, or they're, they're strange or they're different. It's that we're all weird and we're all different. That's what makes us unique. Uh -huh. The Bible says he created every one of us with a divine plan in, in, innate within us imprinted imprinted it was it was it's already there mm -hmm. so like what dana said earlier was what we do is not to get more of god in we need to let jesus in and then have him activate that purpose and send it out we got to get more of god out not more of god in if if we think we have to clean up before we get god out We'll never be good enough. We'll never be clean enough.
will never be sinless. <clears throat> we'll, we'll always have some area in our life that we're going to be disappointed in. We're going to be, we're going to feel guilty and shameful. But that's the grace of God. God is looking not for perfect people, but for peoples whose hearts are perfect toward him. Isn't that amazing? That is cool. You know what you remind me of also when we talked about work glasses, we're all unique with our glasses and prescriptions like that. Forgot, I think Papa mentioned it. Our fingerprint is unique to everybody. We all yeah. have different, even twins. Identical twins have different fingerprints. So yeah, I, I um I use the fingerprint when I do my story. I do a story. I said, I said, your fingerprint identifies you, your DNA. Mm -hmm. And so all of us are different, all of us are unique, all of us have a different DNA, all of us have a different gift and talent to be used. And and so many people want want to make everybody like them mm -hmm. and you know i sort of think everybody should be like me because i'm very happy <laughs> but, but you know it, it's hard to find that unique talent everyone has because you're right hold on we we're judging at that point yeah and when we judge what was it let let the let's see let let somebody throw the first stone who uh who has uh, he was without sin let him cast the first stone they all walked away yeah they all walked away and the lady stood there and said and jesus said to the lady the girl the woman caught in adultery i'd like to ask how who caught who, who did that that was a setup and you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. i believe jesus when he stooped down at that time and started writing in the ground he started writing their name down Mm -hmm. and they started dropping their stones and they started walking away and the lady said he goes lady where are your accusers she goes there's none just you jesus said neither do i condemn thee go go and sin no more isn't that freedom Jesus but, is pretty outstanding. You know, really. but if we would walk more in that grace and that power, we would see more miracles. We'd see more people coming to Christ. But what we do is we start adding strings to the Christianity voice. You need to stop doing this. Quit hanging with those people. Quit chewing. Quit hanging with those women who smoke and drink and, and chew. <laughs> and, and it says, just let it be. Let God clean the fish. When we do it, we suck at it. <laughs> let God clean the fish. The Holy Spirit is does a great job, and he cleans our hearts out. The, the way he does that, and that's what I want to get to tonight, and I want to read a little bit of it to, to you, but I also want to read the power when the power comes. So we, we touch hey, hey, oh, oh, oh. before you Before you start. Hold on, sir. You're not wearing the right jacket. You don't have a tie on. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, that's what we're supposed to look like. Yeah, I don't have the pinky ring either. You know, those <laughs> pinky rings. And, um, but anyways, it said, the early church believers, they, um, they were, um, they, they steadfastly persevered, devoting themselves constantly to the instruction and fellowship of the apostles. They were following their teaching, not, the, not those people. They weren't following the people. In fact, Paul and all those guys, they tried to make gods, and he said, stop it. I'm a man just like you. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a human just like you, but people when they see miraculous things happen, people begin to worship them. They would they would just they would say, No, it's all about Jesus, and you'll find it in this passage. But what they did, the very pillar of a Christian that wants to receive more of the Holy Spirit is to devote themselves to the apostles' teaching, the Bible constantly reading 
devoting themselves constantly to their instruction and breaking bread, eating, fellowshipping with one another. And, um, and um, it also said they, and in prayers and signs and wonders followed. So giving yourself to the apostles doctrine in the Bible, to the breaking of bed, fellowship with one another, and then to prayers, signs and wonders then followed them. And then you know what happened? The Holy Spirit started to move on them and they started to give to other people. So, and, and the Lord added to their number daily, constantly praising God and ha being in favor and goodwill with all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The book of Acts is the birth of the church, the birth of the living church, not a building, because the church met in homes, met on the park, met on the street, and somehow we've housed it in a building and we called it a church. And I think what happens when that happens, you stifle the freedom and the, and, the, and the expansion of the church. Now, this is what happened in Acts chapter 3. Now, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. They had an hour of prayer. You have to dedicate your time to not only the apostles' teaching, but to prayer. An hour of prayer. And so when they were going up on the ninth hour, the hour of prayer, a certain man was uh, crippled from his birth, was being carried along and was laid each day at the gate beautiful in the temple that he might beg for charity gifts from those who entered the temple. So when Peter and John was about to go into the temple, this beggar asked them for a gift. Peter, directing his gaze at him, said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he grabbed him by the hands, and up he came. And he went praising God into the temple. Now listen. Listen, in verse 2 it says, when a, this certain man, crippled from his birth, was being carried along, who was laid each day at the gate, beautiful, at the entrance of the temple, every day for 39 years. Let me ask you something. Who walked by him? Everyone. Yeah. And um, who, who just died before yeah. this? So Jesus went to the temple every day. Think about it. Did he see that beggar there? He said it was laid there every day. Probably. Why didn't Jesus heal him? Maybe Think because about the, beggar, it. the beggar didn't ask for help. He just thought people would bestow on him. That could be. Could be. But you know what I think? Tell me. Jesus walked by him and looked at him, gave him peace, and he said, your time's coming. If there's a time, I don't care. I don't care. There's a time and a place for your healing. You're not ready until, you, until God says you're ready. Even Jesus couldn't heal him because he may not have been ready or willing, like you said. That's but true. when Peter, pardon? There's a time and place for everything. And if you're not ready, hey. <clears throat> There was times in my life that I have had tremendous outpourings of the Holy Spirit. If my sister was here, she would tell you. There had been tremendous healings in my life, both physical, mental, spiritual, relationships. And, and, but there have been times that I felt Jesus, even Jesus walked by me and didn't heal me. This guy sat there at the gate beautiful and he thought 
God walked by him and didn't care. And I guarantee you, when God walked by him, he just smiled. Because Jesus said, Peter and John will be coming by here in just a few days. Think about it. You're not he ready. Got, that's amazing, isn't it? So what we need to do is not use a formula to save somebody or to heal somebody. We need to pray and ask God to reveal himself to them at the time that you can, you can receive it. If I knew what God was, was wanting me to go through and had me go through all through my life and I was going to follow him, if I knew what I had to go through, mm, <laughs> sorry, busy. I would <laughs> say, you know, I love God and everything, but I don't want to go through this again. But you know something? He gives you grace the moment you need it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a good feeling, Dana? Let me ask you a question. That is, way back 1977, you just got in your car accident. You're in a coma for a couple of weeks. You pop out of your coma. What was your feeling towards God? Because you said, yeah, you knew about God, but I got things I want to do. God, yeah. I'll come back to you. And all of a sudden, you get this accident, life-changing, life-threatening. You almost died. Plain and simple. But people were in the right place at the right time, and good things happened. When I woke up from my coma, I still remember it. To the, I can still remember it. My, my, I woke up like a day before or something. And I could see my sister. She had a rose on her white white shirt with a pink rose. I can still see it clearly today. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what had happened. Of course, 12, 13 days have gone streaming by. I didn't know that. And hey, hey, continue on. I have a little dog that I got up. Yeah. bathroom break i'll be right back go ahead keep going anyways so so when when that happened it i all of a sudden i was just very fortunate to be alive when god touches you he, you know he speaks right directly to your heart you know and and you would say yeah you believe because you came um awake no i believed and all of a sudden, when I got up and I could open my eyes, I was very thankful to be alive. I I thought I had to, I deserved to be in a wheelchair the rest of my life. And, and I was just thankful to take in breath, see my family, but I couldn't move a muscle and my left side was paralyzed. I say that to say this. When a miracle happened to me just days later through a Billy Graham crusade, I just said, help me. The power of God, I, I didn't see it. I didn't feel it. I didn't see God. I didn't see an angel. It was just faith. Came down, changed my life, and turned my whole world upside right. And then I, it was like I was running around the hospital seven days later. But like I've said before, there are other times in my life where that didn't happen. I was like that beggar who Peter and John fastened his eyes on him and said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. Grabbed him by the hand, picked him up, and he, woke, he jumped to his feet and he entered into the temple dancing and praising God. That's like what happened to me in this instance. Other instances I've gone through and I've suffered tremendous uh, loss, you know, but <clears throat> what I lost, he also replaced with blessings. 
So, <clears throat> so when we're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the power of God. That's what we're talking about. If we continue, not with a super duper preacher, some <clears throat> guy who has some unique message, you know, we need to bow down and worship this guy. No, we need to follow the apostles' teaching and in prayer and have an hour of prayer. Not that we need to start with an hour of prayer, but spend time talking with God, getting to know him as your father and as your friend. And, and as we do that, the Holy Spirit begins to reveal areas of your life that need to be worked on, need to be changed and transformed. Transformation become, begins from the inside out. It doesn't start from the outside in. You know, we don't need to clean our cup up. Stop, stop these outward things that people say. Well, you shouldn't be saying that or doing that or whatever because people will see it. You know what I'm concerned about? The stuff's on the inside. Mm -hmm. Hatred, prejudice, um, uh, you know, I am right attitude, pride, all of those things you can't really see. All these other things, yeah, you can clean up your life. The Pharisees did a really good job. They cleaned the outside of the dish, but inside they were dead but men's bones because they were greedy, they were judgmental, and they tried to keep it within their ranks. The early church, and Dana's going to read a little bit that he found, the early church um, was made up in the beginning of Jews. The Jews were entrusted with the law. So they, when the new church came, Jesus came and preached to the Jews. But he also said, we need, we're, I died for the whole world. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should have eternal life. Not just Jews, not just Gentiles, but the whole world. And so this is the problem. The problem is, the Jews wanted to keep it to them. Even uh -huh. good Jewish Christian people in the early church wanted to keep it with you and me, and that's it. Keep it secular. Keep it secular. Only for us. Yeah. God was Jewish, so what we're gonna we're Jesus gonna keep them, we're gonna keep it within our ranks. So let's all keep it here. Uh -huh. You see, and so and so it was really important that we understand that Jesus died for the whole world. And, and it was hard to train to take the programming out of people's minds. When you're trained one way about religion, it's hard to undo that. You are correct. It's like true of anything in life. Yeah, everything. It's exactly right. It's like, okay, you know, this is the way you make bread. Well, you could make it that way, but you could make it this way. Oh, Let no, me, that's not bread. Correct. You know, well, but it's still bread. Hold on. Let, let's, let's say you're going to go get a, a, a further degree. The only place that offers that is Michigan State. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to, I'd have to, I'd have to, I've had a hard time doing it. No, I wouldn't. No, I'm, I'm just going to make a point. I went to Michigan State. Mike is a big Michigan fan. Yeah. We like that. We respect each other. Yeah, if when push comes to shove, I root green, he roots blue. But you know what? When they're not playing each other, I root for the blue. And I'm yeah. sure you root for the green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're from the great state of Michigan. Yes. We, we have a common enemy. Well, two of them, Notre Dame and Ohio State, correct? <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes, that, that, you know, but the idea is this, guys. We've got to quit dividing up. And, and Dana, I want you to read that. And I want you to amplify you know, what you were reading and then tell me what you were saying when Peter started preaching to a different group of people. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I found something that's really kind of cool. And it's uh, since we're talking about, you see right behind me, Acts 29. Well, if you're sharp and you realize something, Acts only has 28 chapters. <laughs> 
What's Acts 29? That's the story continues. That's what we're in right now. But Acts, the book of Acts at a glance, it's the New Testament book number five. The author was Luke, the historian, physician, and the Gentile. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, written in 62 AD. That's after death, after when Jesus died. And it covers this time period. The book of Acts covers 30 through 62 AD. So that's a period of 32 years approximately. And they said in the Old Testament, there were 39 books. The New Testament is only 27. Because Old Testament is a heck of a lot longer in time than the New Testament was. But the claims to fame, this covers the, book, the works of the apostles in the early days after Jesus' death. And they talked about the famous stories and acts included the ascension, that's when God went up to heaven, um, the day of Pentecost. We went over that over the past several weeks. Pentecost, 50, 50 days after Jesus died before Easter, or after Easter, then he went up to heaven because it wasn't ready and he had things he had to do and he had to get the Holy Spirit into the people. Paul's conversion, we'll talk about that in a minute. Peter's move to preach to the excuse me to the Gentile world and not just the Jews. That's what Mike was talking about earlier. We we're kind of joking about earlier. Hey, Mike, you know what? We're both Gentiles. <laughs> we are. <clears throat> Gentiles means non-Jewish. We're not Jewish, so we are Gentiles. And that's what Mike was talking about. That the Jews said that. Oh no, hold on, the Pharisees. We only keep this amongst ourselves because everyone else is a Gentile. They don't believe in God. And it, it's our God, not theirs. So um, famous verses in Acts. And this was Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 18. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We talked about that with Pentecost past couple of weeks also. That's right. <clears throat> the other uh, famous verse they have in Acts was Acts uh, chapter 4, verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved. We talked about that. Yeah. Amazing how this all this is, it interconnects. Like yes. That. Yeah. And finally, they have uh, two important uh, points about the book of Acts. First one, Acts is the only book in the Bible that tells us how the early church was born. It gives a valuable account of how the church was able to spark in Jerusalem and spread throughout the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire. Mike's going to talk about that here in a little bit uh, after I touch on the second major point in the book. Chapters 1 through 12 of Acts primarily follow Peter until his belief in preaching to the Gentiles is fulfilled. Not the Jews, to the Gentiles. And then chapters 13 through 28 primarily follow Paul and his missionary journeys far and wide. The book ends before either man is martyred, that means killed, for, the, for their faith, which is why it is dated in the early 60s of AD. Yes, beautiful. You see, it's important because they were martyred, okay? Do you know how many Christians are martyred every year for their yeah. faith? Not not just not just being martyred and murdered on the streets, but we're but murdered for one reason, for their faith. Believe in God. By their belief in God, mm -hmm. 100,000 Christians are martyred every year. Wow. Why don't they hit the news? Because they, that, that's, they don't, it's, it's just not fitting in a crooked and perverse generation. And so save yourself from this crooked generation. So in, night, in, in 60 AD, about thereabout, Peter and Paul were major dominant players in the building of the early church. Uh -huh. Peter 
Um, and Paul went to the whole world. Paul went on his missionary journeys, three of them, and he went all over the world and preached. Peter stayed in Jerusalem and he preached the kingdom of God. And he's the one that opened the door to the Gentile being welcomed into the kingdom. But the Jews, even Jewish Christians, didn't want that to happen because of their programming that they have in their mind. Salvation is for the Jews and the Jews only. Because in the Old Testament, the Jews had the temple and the law. When Jesus died, he ripped the temple and made a way to enter through God, through Jesus, anyone who believes, anyone. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. When you call out to God, he will listen. He'll come in. He doesn't care what, if you have tattoos, he doesn't care what vice you're serving or what vice you have. He just wants you to believe in him and he will clean you up. And so hey, hey, hey. I, I got a question. I got a question. This is something that I brought up earlier. <clears throat> Are we talking to God? Are we talking to Jesus Christ? Because they use the Holy Spirit for us here on earth. Right. <clears throat> well, basically, basically, Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. There's one mediator between us and God, and that's Jesus. Now, Jesus is the way. He sends the Holy Spirit, and we can communicate to God through Jesus and the Holy Spirit wants to make Jesus the center. Uh -huh. So some people pray to the Holy Spirit. I, I mean, and that's fine. I, the Holy Spirit just helped me today. I don't have a problem with that. I think it's all scriptural because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all three one. And uh -huh. so, you know, somebody wants to slice and dice and everything like that. But I think God made the Godhead. So he didn't want us to understand it. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. Hold on. He he didn't That's want it. Right. Yeah. He 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 wanted us to seek and like what we're doing right now. How can we communicate to God through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus? I think God wants us to know that there are some things we got to leave to God. Just do what the Bible says, basically. That's how I believe. I believe the Holy Spirit helps me remind me of what Jesus did. It reminds me I, the Holy Spirit is like the agent that sort of directs us to do these things. Uh -huh. Because now the Holy Spirit is shed abroad in our hearts. So, you know, to divide up and to, and to say, well, this is Jesus, this is God, and this is the Holy Spirit. Basically, God sent Jesus, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. And so we are working through the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit's job is to reveal to us Jesus. He doesn't want to take credit for it. He wants to give it to Jesus because Jesus, somehow, it's, it's a divine intervention I don't understand it totally, and I think there isn't an English word to define the Trinity. That's why they call him a he. They call, you know, all these things different pronouns. I think we don't have an English word that would adequately express the Godhead. Does the that Holy make sense? Trinity. Yeah, well, I was going to say the Holy Trinity, it's, you know. God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could say there, but everything that we have in the Christian faith is taken by faith. Mm -hmm. It's just simple as that. If you see it and can understand it totally, then it's not really faith. And we, we talked on this. We don't know. Uh, what was that movie, uh, Indiana Jones? Remember, he walked across and all of a sudden, yeah. whoa, I'm going to fall. Trust on faith. 
took that stuff. Yeah, he took that stuff. Those are those are things that we need to understand as we grow. I'm sure as we grow, I could define it better of how I see it. But again, I see it with my lenses. Mm -hmm. How you see it through your lenses. Some areas I'm up here, other 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 areas I'm a newborn Christian because there's some things that we like this guy. He isn't ready. If you're not ready to receive the revelation of Jesus Christ in this area of your life, you're not ready. You can try to make yourself ready, but you need to be ready to receive it. And then as you get it, it's like if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. If I knew, like I said, where I had to be today, what I had to go through, you know, ahead of time, I, I would be hard pressed to say I would do it. Yeah, sign me up for that. that I love pain and difficulty. Yeah. You know, what you were talking about, how would we all see things through a different lens. Hey, I'm going to circle back for a bit. Hey, you know, there's this really cool book called When Two Worlds Collide. And there's a <laughs> chapter, The Lens We Use Does Matter. That's right. That's right. You might, you might, you might have heard of that book. Because, because I don't see things as clear. Maybe you would see things clearly. Maybe what you were thinking about the Holy Spirit is going to benefit me. But, you, you know, know we, we don't put our faith in one person. We work better as a team. Yeah. Plain and simple. We do because you're good in some things. I'm good in something else. Papa's good in this. Somebody else is good in that. You know. You see what happens is the body, the body, the body of Christ is made up of different, uh, different characters. Just mm -hmm. like our body is different, we can't all be an eye, we can't all be a finger, <clears throat> we can't all be a mouth. Or in your example, you were a member of a basketball team, five players. You were pretty darn good, but you know what? You had to count on the other four people to do their jobs so you can do your job or for them to do their jobs. Otherwise, you can have five great players, but they don't function as a team. Right. And, <clears throat> and you see that even though you think, oh, they're going to be great. You know, you could be. You got to function. You got to function in unity. So if you want the Holy Spirit's power, you've got to focus on the pillars of accessing the Holy Spirit. Number one is staying in the apostles' teaching. Number two is meeting with God in prayer. And not necessarily talking. It's talking, but mainly listening. Learning to hear your, the voice. Listening, is, as we said, one mouth, two ears. I, 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 um, a girl that was blind all her life heard the voice of her mother. Okay, and was healed, not miraculously, but they put a lens in her eye, and it was the first time she saw her mother. You know, wow. how, do you know how she saw her? Mm -hmm. Heard her voice. She, she, tuned said, in, yeah. she tuned in to hear her mother's voice, and she came out and she saw her eyes. And you could see the expression on this late girl's face, finally seeing the voice that she heard all of her life. Think about that. God is waiting for you to hear him. When you hear him, you'll never be the same. But so many people will not listen because they got to. They first of all they think oh I'm too dirty I God doesn't want to hear me. Wait my, I know it all. What do you mean yeah. I know it all? Yeah, this is what my dad said to me. You know, I said, Dad, do you want me to pray with you? And he said, he said, he said, no, you can pray. I think God's mad at me. And I said, and this is getting back to our point. I said, Dad, have you ever been mad at me? 
And he goes, no, I don't think so. I go, just think back about two weeks ago. <laughs> you know, and he goes, he goes, he goes, no, will you pray? And so I prayed and I said, God, forgive my dad and forgive us for the things that I said throughout my life that I didn't want to say and the, and the things that I did that I didn't want to do. And also, forgive me for the things that I should have done but didn't and the things I should have said that I didn't or my dad did. And I said, amen. And then my dad said, and forgive me for the things I'm thinking about doing that I don't want to do. Hmm. And it, it just shocked me. Fathers have a lot of wisdom. And you know what I'm saying? And that was several days before he died. But the point is, the point is this. God wants to hear from you. He's not mad at you. <laughs> he wasn't mad at that beggar that begged every day at the temple. It wasn't his time. It wasn't his time. But when Peter and John walked by him, he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have in the name of Jesus. He grabbed him by the hand. His ankle bones received strength. He, he started praising God and dancing and running in to the temple, leaping and praising God. That, my friend, is life changing. And so what happens then, and we're going to go through this book of Acts. And we're in what we call the 29th chapter. The Acts of the Apostles in the Bible is 28 chapters. We're living in Acts 29 right now. When 29 closes, Jesus will come and close it. And so what we need to do is learn to listen to the Holy Spirit, listen to God, speak to Jesus, allow him to lead and guide and direct our path. Open up to us those areas like at the, 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 the beggar where we need healing, we need a touch, we need emotional strength. God is not finished with us yet. Dana says that a lot. If you know, well, every day Dana wakes up, every time he says, I'm six feet above the ground, God isn't through with me yet. He's got plans for me. I don't know what the hell they are. Excuse me for saying a swear word, but no. I don't know what they are. Hey, hey I, I want to throw something back at you for a minute. So you said the beggar was outside the temple for 39 years? Is that what um, the, the number was? How, how many years was the beggar outside the temple? 38 years. Okay. 39 years. Hold on. What about the Pharisees? The, the priests inside? Why couldn't they have come out and done something? Just a hypothetical. Yeah. Why couldn't they? Because they were, they were, they were probably walking by him and said, you got sin in your life. That's why you're, that's why you're, 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 you're lame. You see, sometimes when we try to make everything in our mind, we can't reason why some people are sick and some people are not. What we need to realize is God doesn't want anybody sick. And so when we realize that, we can't say, well, you're, God wants you better, but, you're, but you have sin in your life or something you did or something your parents did. We got to quit trying to figure it out and believe God for them like Peter and John. Silver and gold, we can't figure out why you're, why you're there, but in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Maybe you're crippled in your spirit today. Maybe somebody out there is crippled in their spirit. Somebody said something that pushed you out to church because you didn't look right or you didn't act right. And you've turned your back on God. Let me tell you, God hasn't turned his back on you. Correct. I don't care how many years it's been. I don't even care how many days it's been. God will never give up on you. He died to set you free. And when we realize that God has a plan for our life, we follow the purpose, the design, the grand design that's in us. 
And the only way I can tell you to do it is read the Bible because in those pages is your purpose and your plan. Different than mine, when I read the Bible, it's God's purpose and plan for me. These glasses are used to define the purpose God has for me. And I'm not talking about physical glasses. I'm talking about the, the lenses he puts in my life. When I read the Bible, it highlights certain areas. And it will for you if you just allow it. Just trust it. Just say, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. That's all I did. God, I don't know what you want to do with me. Just show me what you want me to do. Let me tell you, is all you have to do is ask. He will show you. Papa talked about, he went out to the dock. God, help me. He didn't know what was going on and what his next step was. Help me. That's all you got to do. Reminds me of a story. So there's this guy. It's, it's raining. Town's flooding. Buildings are getting swept away. He's in his building. And praise to God. God, come on. You're going to save me? Next, you know, here comes a boat with uh, some firemen in it right there. Come on, buddy. We're going to save you. No, no. Wait for God. Come on. We're gonna, let's go. No, I'm waiting for God. He leaves. God, come on, show yourself, help me, save me. Next thing you know, the rain's still coming down. Here comes another boat comes by, and this time it's the, the rescuers, the Coast Guard. You know, come on, buddy, let's go. Nope, 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 I'm waiting for God. He said he's going to save me. They couldn't convince him. They went off. Next thing you know, the rain kept coming, thing flooded. The guy drowns, and he dies. He goes up to heaven. He goes, God, where were you? I asked you for help. He says, I sent firemen. You didn't listen to them. I sent the Coast Guard. I sent my angels to address those people. You didn't listen to them. Kind of it's, the same thing. That is exactly right. You know, don't worry about what other people say about God. Talk to him. You'll find out. You'll find out he's more of a friend than anybody you've ever met. He'll never leave listening. you. Never. In my darkest days. And I've been through, even after being a Christian, I went through some really dark, depressing times. But you know something? He never left my side. And you know something? Those are the greatest lessons of my life to say, God, are you crazy to have loved me this much? Speaking of angels. You told a story. I don't know if it was Lansing or what city you're in. You saw this really lady that was, a, you wanted to talk to her. You followed her. It's late, bad part of the city. You go up and she's on the road. You guys are up there talking. You start chatting. Then all of a sudden you got tired and God, it's two in the morning or something. I got to go home. You got home. And she goes, I'll, I'll see you around. Or how come up? Where do you go? And it was like I-94 or I Yeah, I-96. I-96. And then you said you never saw her again, but you go, maybe that was an angel. Yeah, I'll never forget it. I mean, I've had some wild stories like that. That if you if you really when we get through this life and God re replays our, our life to us because he will. He will show you the boats that came by and you, you pushed them away. He will show you the angels you bypassed or the angels you criticized when he put them in your way. This, angel, this angel I knew after I left, this was somebody else. And I couldn't believe I was totally at peace. And I went to her home and it was like, what am I doing? And I just kept going. And we sat on the top of the roof of this house, and there's a couch there. And I'll never forget it. We sat there and we talked about uh, eternal life and God. And she just basically just listened. And then she, I go, well, what do you do? She goes, I traverse 96. 
back and forth to Detroit. I go, what do you mean by that, you Travers? She goes, I, I guard the highway. And I'm going, I got shivers. And I got, I, I was like, I thought, what? And, and uh, we talked for a long time and I was walking. The minute I left that house, tremendous fear came on me. It was like there was tremendous peace when I was with them. And then when I found out I was in the middle of the hood and there was parties and people or I was just, I was like two miles, three miles. I had to walk through these back. I, I had no idea where I was. And I got to my car and I was no, I was so thankful to get in my car and get home and get in a warm bed and say, holy smokes, where, where, where was I? And I can't even tell you the house. I couldn't even take you to the house today. It was just an experience I'll never, ever forget. It's just something. The journey with God is colorful. And if you open up your eyes, your spiritual eyes and ears to hear and see, you will see things and hear things that you will never, ever forget. It'll be a great journey. Right, Dana? You know, and I think what's funny, too, when you get it in front of God, he's also going to talk about the times that um, you asked for help and he sent an angel. You didn't listen or he sent you a suggestion. You didn't take him up on it like with Papa. Go talk to this person. I got better things to do like that. Found it, and the guy says, "Thank God you came over because I was going to kill myself." So, yeah, you don't know the things that you do and the things you don't do could impact somebody's life. You know, taking cookies over to somebody, it, it, just doing something kind can really bring life to each other. So listen. Remember what I said? If Dana wins one, I win one, Mike wins one, and that makes it six. And the next time that, that we win somebody else, that makes it 12, 24, 48, 96. And by the time in 25 years, the whole world would be saved. We need to understand that. And just be kind. Be kind, be kind, be kind. Isn't that what you say, Dana? That's my word. That's your word. <laughs> hey, man. You're amazing. You. <laughs> you say my word, I say your word. God, we're getting to be like an old married couple, aren't we? <laughs> hey, I love you, Dana. I love you guys paying attention. I, I want you to realize that the Holy Spirit is waiting for you to respond is all he's a perfect gentleman he won't force his way on you he will knock at your heart's door jesus will knock at your door but he's a perfect gentleman he's not gonna force he he's not gonna force his way on you but when you ask him to come in he will make you one of his and you're not gonna be weird you're gonna be changed you're going to change from the inside out. Jesus will forgive your sins and give you a new heart that will be totally like his. And when, he knocks, just, on the door, yeah, when he knocks on the door, you've got to invite him in. He will stand there knocking until you open the door and say, you know, I've never really understood a personal relationship. I went to church, I didn't feel a personal relationship, or I did, and I walked away. But the point is, he never walked away from you. Correct. He will never leave your side. In the darkest of your days, when you think that God isn't close, he's close as the mention of his name is all you got to do is say, God, have you really longed to be with me this much? And he would say, yes. God never Just stops loving you. Never, never, never. No matter how dark the days get, no matter what you got to face tomorrow, some people may be in a hospital bed. 
Some people may be listening to us and, and, and they're very ill. I pray right now that you would open up your heart's door and receive Jesus to heal your body so that you would be like that blind beggar, jumping up, leaping, and praising God, and just keep walking and win one. That's all. You know what? We're not promised tomorrow. We can't go back and live in the past. We got today. That's it. Make the most of, make the most of it. Yep. Amen. 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 Be kind. Hey, love everybody. You're awesome. So live like it. Give God a chance. Give him a chance. Give Jesus a chance to come in and change your world. And you will not be disappointed. Trust me on that. And get the book. <laughs> $5.99. You can download it. $5.99. You can't copy. beat it. $12.99 for the uh the softbound copy. Yeah. Hey, what, what does what does Pop always say? Let's see here. It, it's a great day to live, to it's love, and to love. learn. It's a, another great day to live, love, and learn. Love you, man. Love you too. Have a good day, everybody. Love you. We'll see you next week. See you.